this chapter is about the wave modifier, and I have a cube here that I scaled a little and a subserve modifier just to have some vertices to work with. I'm going to set this to simple and twirl this up. Then I'm going to apply a wave modifier. And if you scrub through the timeline, you can see the wave modifier does something. But for now, it's not very much. So let's have a look at all these options. There's actually quite a few of them. First of all, increase the height. Because this cube is kind of big, that's why we need pretty big waves in order to make this jump. And you can see the wave modifier is by default already animated. So the only way to stop the waves is to reduce their lifetime. For example, if I take a lifetime of 50 right here, you can see once I get to frame 50, the wave modifier stops. And in this case, it stops over the course of 10 frames which is the damping here. If I increase the damping to, let's say, 50 frames, you can see at frame 60 it's still working, and then the waves start getting smaller and smaller until at frame number 100 they stop. So that's the damping option. If you don't want your wave modifier to start at frame 50, if you don't want your wave modifier to start at frame 0, but still have a limited life, you can check the offset option. So if I type in 50 here, you can see it's motionless for 50 frames, and then it starts waving. You can offset the center of the waves by using these sliders. You can see now it is the center of the wave is sliding in x direction and this is relative to your object. So one would be right at the side of your object. So this is 100% of your object. Same goes for Y of course. There is another way to offset the waves and that would be by adding an empty or any object and you can choose the start position to be the empty. Now, if I move the empty, you can see the start position of the wave moves as well. There is another option here, the fall off. And the fall off basically determines how far the waves will travel through your mesh. So by default, it's zero and by that it is disabled. But if I set this to 0.5, you can see that the wave is limited to this area. I don't know how this is measured. I don't think those are blender units or percentage of the match width. So you'll just have to figure out a value that is suitable for you. And note that the object input totally overrides this. So these values don't matter at all anymore once you have a start position object. Let's have a look at some of the other options. For example, if I uncheck X, then you can see the waves are only moving in Y direction. And I'm going to set the life back to zero, meaning that it's going to be continuous motion, just so I don't have to check where I'm at in my timeline. Of course, if I only check X, the waves will only move in X direction. If I uncheck cyclic, then there will be one wave, and that's it. There's another option, I can have the waves move along the normals and you can check the normals you can go into edit mode and under display you can over here you can check the normals of the faces and you can increase the size and you can see now this is where the normals are pointing and if I use the normals for the displacement then some waves will go in this direction some in this some in this and some in this and that will really deform your mesh I'd probably recommend that if you want to seriously war warp something, but not if you want to have motion that you can actually predict. Of course, you can uncheck X and Y, so you only have the motion in Z normals, and that actually looks a lot more normal because right now the wave is doing sort of mirroring this object because the normals on the top point outside and the Z normal of the bottom faces point down. As always we can limit this modifier to a certain vertex group. If I check these, go to vertex groups plus assign and then go back to my modifier settings, I can choose this group and you'll see the bottom vertices are not affected. There is a, another option, you can check texture. If you click new, you can see that the entire cube 
looks like it's been influenced by a displacement modifier, but you can see that is not the case. It's quite the opposite, actually, and that will become more apparent if we have a look at the texture. Right now, the texture type is non. No, that's actually a different texture. Okay. Now you can see the texture is going from left to right. And let me recenter this object. You can see the left side is not affected at all and the right side is affected fully and that is because of the blend texture. The cloud texture we just saw is not displacing the mesh, it's quite the opposite. The cloud texture is the only place where the mesh gets displaced by the wave modifier. So the texture option here works in a very similar way as the vertex group but textures can be animated, which is great. So vertex groups can, to my knowledge, only be animated by the dynamic paint modifier. Then there are a couple of more options, but they are fairly safe explanatory. If I increase the speed, the speed of my wave simulation will go up. I'm going to disable the texture. If I increase the height, the height will go up. If I increase the width, the waves will be wider. And if I increase the narrowness, the waves will have a sharper crest. I guess that's it for the wave modifier. Thank you for watching.